I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. My guests with me today include physicians with Ortho Atlanta, the office here in Douglas County. Thank you, Dr. Matthew Jaffe and Dr. Mark Duffield for joining me today. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. All Happy right. to be here. I appreciate you all taking time out of your busy schedules. I love surgeons. I work with surgeons uh, most of my career, my 40-year career, so it's an honor for me to sit and chat with you and, and certainly we could talk about some things that are current and then also some historical things since I've said 40 years. Uh, tell me a little uh, about uh, Ortho Atlanta, uh, Atlanta here in Douglas County. Tell me what services you provide and I'll start with you, Dr. Jaffe, if you don't mind. Sure, well, Ortho Atlanta has been here in Douglasville for the last five years, Great. although our practice was here a lot longer than that previously. Uh, we have an office off of Hospital Drive. We see all manners of musculoskeletal injuries. Uh, we do have our own MRI and our own physical therapy center. Uh, and we can oh. take care of patients from the beginning to the end. Okay. All right. Uh, Dr. Duffield, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your, uh, your, your, I'm assuming you're all in practice together. We are, right. yep. Okay, so mm -hmm. you, do you have a specific group of patients that you uh, see or you just look at the whole gamut of starting from maybe the joints or total hips do you do any type of surgery can you talk about your surgeries that you perform that's what I want to do I'll just be specific sure we um, we generally do general orthopedics so we mm -hmm. see all of a large variety of uh, orthopedic problems um, most of our surgical procedures are uh, joint reconstruction mm -hmm. um, ligament reconstructions fracture care um, and a lot of in-office treatment as well that's not necessarily surgical. Most right. of our business is uh, non-operative. Um, probably about 20% of our, uh, our work is surgical. The rest is in the office and uh, managing orthopedic problems that are not necessarily surgical. Okay, uh, Dr. Jaffe, if you could talk about some of those problems that are not surgical. Uh, can you sure. So, I mean, we, you know, patients come in with a one or two or sometimes more problems. Generally, uh, we see neck problems, we see back problems, we see shoulders, we see knees, we see ankles, we see feet. Um, we all, we specialize in orthopedics, which is bones and joints. Yes. Uh, we see a lot of fracture care out of the emergency room. Um, in my practice, I do mainly knees and shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my surgeries are on the knee and shoulder. Um, and we're happy to take care of patients with whatever problems they have. And if we need to, if it's something we can take care of ourselves, we'll do it here. And if it's something we need to refer out, occasionally we have to refer out. But most orthopedic problems we're able to take care of. Let's talk about total knees. Okay, I certainly was um, a scrub tech that back in the day, surgical technologist many moons ago in the 70s is where I started off actually. I uh, was a medic in the Army and uh, acquired my um, certification from the Academy of Health Sciences at Fort Sam Houston, Texas, which is in San Antonio when, when I was in the Army. Did a lot of cases, but those it, things have changed, particularly in the 80s is when I was on the orthopedic team at Methodist Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. 50 operating rooms, which I thought was just huge for operating rooms to have 50. But tell me uh, about the, the total knee surgeries now. This, we're doing something a little different. When I was scrubbing in on cases, we were using that glue that was that that pungent glue. Are they still cement, using that? Cement. cement. Yeah, mm -hmm. that post cement. So we're still using cement. Somebody told me now you just clap it on the on the knee and that's it. You don't have to do you know on the on the tibia and fib. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm remembering everything. But you just you don't even use so we are using cement. I still use cement for all my total knees. Good. Okay. Someone said they don't use that anymore. I said, okay, I'll talk to my surgeons and find out. So it is something that is applicable. 
Uh, let's talk about um, AC separations of the shoulder. Are you seeing many of those today, and what can we do to, to be proactive, Dr. Duffy? Well, the, yes, and we do see those. And I'd also like to say thank you for your service to our country. I did not know you were a medic. That's very admirable. I appreciate that very much. Um, we do see AC separations. Happened to see a patient this morning had that very injury. Oh, um, okay. It's most commonly a activity or sporting related injury. Not mm -hmm. all of them, but a lot of them are. And it, if you fall kind of on, well, I guess I would say the point of your shoulder, um, sometimes that part of your shoulder and your collarbone or clavicle will separate from itself, creating the AC separation. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them are not surgical. Yeah. Some categories are. It just depends on the degree of the separation and uh, the individual's disability with it. So, but yes, it's a it's an injury we see. It's not often, but we see them several times a year. Um, I think of all the shoulder trauma cases, those are probably the easier managed ones okay. because they're not typically surgical. They right. get better. Um, some of the other things we see, you know, around the shoulder anyway, are proximal humerus fractures, mm -hmm. clavicle fractures. Those tend to be more, uh, I guess, aggressively treated surgically. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it kind of depends on the patient and their lifestyle <coughs> um, and, and their deficiencies from those injuries. Um, but we see all of those. Uh, shoulder work is a big part of an orthopedic practice, mm -hmm. and um, those are all elements to it. Oh, great. See Dr. a lot of AC separations during football season. Oh, yes. Yeah, That's football seasons, you know, anytime a player falls and lands on their shoulder, most of the time it's an AC separation. Wow. And they're usually grade one, which is a very mild injury. But grade two and grade threes can get a lot more serious and require a lot more time off and time to heal. But most of them, the players are able to go back within a couple of weeks. Wow. I uh, spent a significant uh, amount of time um, taking call, and I know standing side by side my orthopedic surgeons uh, late at night, and I remember, if my memory serves me correctly, we had a lot of OR, IF, open reduction internal fixations, and we had closed reductions uh, of the fixations. I want to talk about, I believe if we call them lag compressions, that's way back in the day, just to stabilize. What are we, are we using anything different now in, in um, healthcare? Uh, Richards, have you ever heard? I know it's Richards lag compression. Have you ever heard? I know you've heard of Richards, uh, the Richards system. Is that a, that may outdate you all? Uh, there, there was a trauma system, the Richards trauma system. Yes. Um, and not a common. Mom, I'm back in the 80s. I'm thinking, I'm just going through my mind. Didn't Richards used to be Smith and Nephew? Yes, yeah. yeah, Smith yeah. and Nephew. Smith and Nephew mm -hmm. bought out Richards, and yeah. is now <laughs> Richards has become Smith and Nephew, which is a very big orthopedic company that has all sorts of different equipment that we use. They make total hips, total knees, mm -hmm. fracture, I mean, all, all sorts of stuff. Are we still, uh, like, I guess, working on a lot of patients and are they needing the open reduction internal fixation, which includes the fixation of the hip with the screw or whatever, plates? So you see quite a bit of those coming through today or, and some were as a result of fall, some were a result of <coughs> trauma. Are we seeing that? Uh, quite often, and I won't say necessarily in Douglas County, just in the medical arena for orthopedics. How we treat certain fractures has everything to do with what bone it is, mm -hmm. where it's broken, the personality of that fracture. Um, so to your question, yes, we do a lot of that, um, but there's protocols to it depending on, on all those elements to it. Um, and it's, in a sense, a little bit textbook. There's sort of yeah. ways to treat certain injuries uh, that may not necessarily be age-related or activity-related. Some just have to be stabilized one way or the other. Uh, so we do a lot of open reduction and trauma fixations um, on a variety of different bones that get broke, whether it's the humerus, the femur, the tibia. Ankles are common, mm -hmm. wrists are common. Yes. Those are probably the most common ORIFs we see. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of those can be treated closed too. It just depends on the scenario. Are we still using the C-arm x-ray? It's still Absolutely. there. Yeah. It's yeah. still there. You have to drape couldn't, it and... Couldn't survive without ah. it. It's, you know, I was uh, thinking maybe we'd modify it and come up with something else, but I remember that I call it the big 
we call it the big dinosaur, comes in the room and certainly the surgical technologist has to drape it to make sure that, you know. It's kind of the stethoscope of orthopedics. Yeah. We have to have so it's still, it's, it's, it's still around, okay. Absolutely. Tell me um, about Douglas County. Um, first of all, you say you've been here five years. Uh, have you, are you enjoying your, your, our, pra our, practice, your practice? Our, our current practice has been here five years, but Dr. Dufflet and I have been here 20 plus years. He, wow. he was here seven years before me, and I okay. came out here in 1999, 2000 to start practice out here. So he was instrumental in, in bringing me onto the practice, and then we've been together for the last 20 years okay. in Douglas County. In Douglas County. Long Let's talk time. a little bit about med school. Where did, where did you finish? I went to medical school in Missouri. Missouri. Um, born and raised in Michigan. Okay. Um, and did my residency in Michigan and also in Tampa, Florida. Okay. Um, spent a little time in Europe doing a trauma fellowship. Um, but most of the well, majority of my training has been in the U.S. Okay. What about you, Doctor? I grew up. I grew up here in Atlanta. I went to Riverwood High School in Sandy Springs. I went to Emory for college. Emory for medical school. Did a five-year residency up in Baltimore. Wow. Did a one-year sports medicine fellowship in Baltimore with the Ravens, and then Baltimore came back Ravens. here. Came back here to work in 2000. I've been here for the last 20 years. So it was, it was a coming home for me. Coming back to Atlanta. Coming back. That's excellent. I, uh, speaking of the Ravens, are you involved in any type of sports medicine also, or you have a team? Yeah, but both he and I cover Douglas football games. Oh, um, good. I've been covering Douglas County this year. I previously had covered Alexander. Mark's covered several teams out here in Douglas County, and so we go to the games and see the patients in the office and talk to the trainers and try to keep everybody up and running. Good. Wow. Um, I just had a few questions that my team pulled together for me. I want to stay on script. Um, one of the questions were, uh, was, what typical injuries are associated with knees? And you had, I believe we spoke on, uh, about that. Can you tell me if there's anything s specific to knees, Dr. Duffy? Well, in a sports-related scenario, I mean, we see meniscal tears. The meniscus mm -hmm. is kind of a little shock absorber soft tissue structure in the knee. Mm -hmm. And we have them on the inside and the outside of the knee, medial lateral refer to it as. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most common structural injury that we operate on in the knee. Um, we hear a lot about the ACL injuries, the mm -hmm. anterior cruciate ligament. Those get a fair mm -hmm. amount of media coverage with uh, athletes, collegiate, professional, and we see those a fair amount. Uh, so we do reconstructions with those. Um, there's a variety of different ways in how to manage that and how to address that that surgery. Um, a lot of knee contusions, a lot of breaks here and there. People break their patella. Um, bad trauma, the femur and the tibia can both get broke. And we address all of those. Okay. Um, so the, the knee's a big component to an orthopedic practice. I mean, we see a lot of those uh, t problems on a regular basis. It's interesting how we go, we go from pediatric knee problems all the way up to geriatric knee problems. Mm -hmm. And so in the younger groups, we see kneecap problems and tracking problems. Middle age, we tend to see a lot of meniscus tears and things like that. And then mm -hmm. seniors, we see all the total knee replacements that we do. So we really, we, we, we get to treat knees from the beginning to the end. It's wow, uh, speaking of knees, the ACL today, laparoscopic still, of course, am I correct? Arthroscopic. Yes. Arthroscopic. Mm -hmm. and, um, so you're suturing through the scopes now, is that true? We can. Uh, the ACL <laughs> isn't necessarily a suturing scenario, yeah. but uh, we do a lot of suturing type techniques, both in the knee and the shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, I, we used to use that heavy Mersoline. I don't know if they still, that's uh, old school. What are yeah. they using now, wire? Or? Well, it depends what you're, what you're doing with it. I mean, for, for ACLs, you don't suture anymore. You have to do a new ACL, either a cadaver tendon or a allograft to graft from a human being. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to basically build a new ACL. The suturing techniques, we do meniscus repairs sometimes. Yes. And we use usually an ortho cord. It's a very thick, strong suture material. Mm -hmm. um, and for shoulders, for rotator cuff surgery, we always use sutures, and that's usually ortho cord as well or the some sort of a... So some sort of a very strong fiber suture rather than just a string or a thread. Yes, and see how it, things have advanced since I've been in the operating room standing beside my surgeons. That's why I said we use that old heavy Mersoline back in the day. It's, uh, I believe it's a green type suture. It looks almost green or teal color. 
Uh, Dr. Gaffey, let me ask you a question. Um, what ancillary services does uh, Ortho Atlanta offer? Uh, uh, such as MRI, you mm -hmm. talked about that PT and DME. DME, yeah. mm -hmm. is that the, your durable mm -hmm. medical equipment? Exactly, okay. so we have, we have an, our own MRI. Mm -hmm. uh, almost every one of our Ortho Atlanta offices has an MRI. Okay. Some are different sizes and different strengths, so some MRIs are good for knees and shoulders, some are better for backs and hips. Um, but here at Douglasville, we do mainly knee and shoulder, ankle MRIs, extremity MRI. Uh, we do have in-office physical therapy. We have several very highly trained and great physical therapists working with us. Mm -hmm. So most of our people that we operate on or don't operate on can actually do their rehab in our office with us. It's a physician supervised therapy. So if there's a problem or an issue over there, they can come and get us to come take a look and see what's going on. Um, and then we also have DME, which is durable medical equipment. We mm -hmm basically put braces on patients mm -hmm. and they don't have to go somewhere else to get their braces. That's for ankles and knees and things like that. We've got really good, great setup for, for bracing in the office as well. You know, speaking of braces, I want to talk about it. When I was a little girl, I had to have a special shoe made in my daughter as well. Uh, you may remember the Dennis Brown shoes. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about those? Are they, you know, for that's what we had, my daughter and I both. It was genetic, I'm assuming. Can you talk about that? What are we doing today for uh, patients that have what I had? I guess the feet going in different directions. What are you using now as your method? Well, we, we, we don't do a lot of pediatrics in our office, but okay. the way I understand it from my training was that they kind of learned that those braces didn't really change anything. Right and that most of the deformities that we were worried about in littler kids, they grew out of. As they skeletally matured, a lot of those tibial torsions and those twisting problems with kids' legs not in the right position, they just grew out of. So we would do physical therapy and we would help the kids learn to, to walk a little better, but as far as twisting their feet and putting braces on and all that stuff, I, I think a lot of that's fallen by the wayside. Okay, my daughter actually um, had not, she didn't have the Dennis Brown, she had a cast from the hip down, mm -hmm. similar to the spica cast mm -hmm. type, and I know if you heard of the yeah, spica. That's usually for hip dysplasia, for hip problems in mm -hmm. kids. That's, but she walks fine now. And she's a teacher at Douglas County High School. So. Oh, yeah. that's great. Um, let's talk about um, the insurance process, and that was one of the questions, and certainly, you know, I believe in HIPAA, so if I'm overstepping my boundaries, just say, Chairman, I can't talk about that, I said, I understand. What insurance, insurance plans are, are you associate, uh, associated with in your offices? Do you have Medicare, workers' comp, and major insurance plans for your patients? And anybody can take it. Doctor? We do. Okay. There's a lot of them. Okay. So I'm not sure we'd be able to. Answer all of them. And yes. that's probably your more, office, your More than we can team. count. More yes. than we can count. I'll we, just we, we are on Medicare. Uh, we do see Ambetter. We see Blue Cross Blue Shield. We see Aetna. We see Cigna. Uh, pretty much any insurance plan or policy we participate in other than some of the more restrictive Kaiser plans I think but uh, our office manager would be able to answer that's what that I was question. saying that's more a lot, of a question a lot for your office manager I'm thinking yeah. no I don't think they can answer this we just come to work and see the patients yes what what days do you see patients every day Monday through Fridays at certain times or? It, our schedules some days coincide and some days are opposite but I'm in surgery on Monday mornings and Wednesday mornings in office the rest of the time. Mark, okay. you do surgery Wednesday and Friday, but you're in office the rest of the time. So there's always somebody in our office able to see patients, and we try our best to see patients the same day they call. So anybody who calls in will, will be seen the same day or at least the next day without difficulty. And I love to hear surgery. Your block times, right? You say you have your block times still in surgery. You have those and you work with the ORs. Are you performing your surgeries here at Wellstar? Are you at Wellstar uh, Douglas? I'm asking Wellstar Douglas, or is it the one in Cobb where your surgery is performed? I, I do all my uh, inpatient cases at Wellstar Cobb. Okay. Um, we use our surgical center in Austell quite yes. often okay. as well. Okay. So my, my block times are Wednesdays, depending on which facility I'm at. Um, and I, we fill those up pretty good. Okay. I do all my surgeries at Douglas, Douglas, and then the outpatient surgeries I do at the sur our surgery center up on the east-west connector. Okay. Yep, you know, I'm saying block times because the surgeons, oh, well, block time, I just want to get in there. 
TAT, the turnaround times, I know they're still looking at all mm -hmm. that and get you in and out first, you know, just wheels in and all that. I remember all that, so I'm just, well, yep. I'm just having a moment of reflection. Um, one of the questions that, was, uh, that I was, my team pulled together and I'll ask, when an injury or pain or symptoms occurs, what initial treatment can you try at home? For example, if you notice you're having a little pain in your hip, instead of rushing to the doctor, it may be, I call it a visit from um, Uncle Arthur, which mm -hmm. is arthritis. What do you suggest yeah. you do? <laughs> well, the, the old rice technique works well. Is it I mean, rest, uh, ice, yes. compression, and elevate? elevate yep. oh, Those see. are always a good start. Uh -huh. uh, most injuries respond to that reasonably well. Okay. And if the symptoms just don't improve or it's not tolerable, then a visit to urgent care or the, or the emergency room is probably next in order. Uh, we do see patients that are acute injuries that come directly to the office. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time we're seeing patients that have been to the emergency room and then come to us. Uh, but to your question, the, the rice technique works pretty well. Okay. Good place to start. Dr. Jaffe had a question for you. Uh, as we all age, um, my mother, she just it's just convinced that the weather has something to do with mm -hmm. pains when they come. Do you do you believe that the weather ab can? Ab absolutely. <laughs> I have patients that can tell you when the next rain's coming, when the weather's going to get colder. Arthritis and post-operative patients can always feel changes in the barometric pressure. And so depending what the pressure is outside, the patients feel increased pain or decreased pain. That's why a lot of people move to Florida and Phoenix because there's you know, very low humidity, very low pressure, um, but definitely changes in the pressure brings in a lot of patients to the office. Mom, you have it. Yeah, she, she was correct. That's she said, no, absolute. I know it's going to rain, it's, it's cold. I said, Mom, that's, she said, I know what this is going to do. She said, I'm like a weather lady. So I, wanna, I will give her confirmation that it's true because of the barometric pressure. Barometric pressure. Your wow. joints are sensitive to barometric pressure. Well, I do remember that actually when I was uh, carrying my daughter had Bell's palsy and that was due, it was my understanding from my doctor at the time, the neurologist said it was due to the barometric pressure. It was a change in it. And it was, we had a uh, hurricane. Um, we lived in North Carolina, right 18 miles from the ocean. So I will, so it has an effect. Okay. Arthritis, can you tell us a little bit, uh, Dr. Duffy, tell me a little bit about arthritis. What can we do at home to just ward off this uncomfortable feeling? I, I'm approaching a birthday another day. I said, I look 62, don't start with me because it's coming and, I, and it's cold now, but now I feel a little better. What can you do to, is exercise, do you recommend exercising? Is it something we can eat? Talk about that. Well, it's a, it's a really good question. And it, as you might imagine, it's something we see a lot and yes. have a conversation with a lot of patients along those lines. I, I've found over the years that trying to describe that with patients is much like talking about wearing the tread of a tire. <laughs> and if we're born with 50,000 miles worth of tread, we start seeing arthritic symptoms somewhere around the 30,000 mile range. Okay. And it progresses. You can't really stop wearing it any more than you can really stop wearing the tread on your tires in your car. Um, but as the symptoms become more prominent, certain medications, um, the anti-inflammatory groups like Advil or Leave are helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, the longer acting versions of those tend to be more helpful as the tread wear persists. Um, but icing activity, I encourage patients not to stop their activities. That tends to make people more stiff mm -hmm. and sore. Um, so it's a little bit of a relationship between the patient and whatever joint is bothering them. Okay. Um, we'll use injections to help offset some of that cortisone, tread wear symptoms. Mm -hmm. Cortisone we use. Mm -hmm. is it's kind of the most important thing we have in our toolbox is, is using cortisone. Um, until patients get into that 40,000 mile range <laughs> and then they become potential candidates for replacement. Yeah. Um, so that, that's kind of a general way of looking at it, but it's arthritic changes is an element to all of our lives really. And some people wear faster than others. And so we try to address those changes early on to help them manage it. There are some supplements that can help. Glucosamine is shown to have some benefit. Mm -hmm. Glucosamine is kind of the building block molecule for cartilage formation. Yes. So 
people taking that at about 1,500 milligrams a day, that some people do get benefit from that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some injectables that we will use once in a while in the office uh, along those same lines to help them regenerate cartilage. Okay. It doesn't all work as well as we'd like it to. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> just keep moving and do the best you can with it for the most part mm -hmm. uh, and, until you can't and then we'll intervene and try yeah, to help with it. Dr. Jaffe, I was going to ask you, uh, you, you spoke earlier about knees. You said that's a, a lot, I should say, a significant portion of your work. Uh, talk about the, you know what, I've, I've been around friends who's had, had an opportunity to have total knees, knee surgery. They say they feel like a brand new person once it happens. Can you tell me what makes them feel so good? Because everything has been mainly replaced. Are you, what so, are you So a total knee replacement really is the the end or the final treatment for severe arthritis. Yes. Most patients have already tried injections and activity modifications, medications, weight loss. They've done everything they can to get their knees feeling better. And at the end, when the bone is literally rubbing on the bone, when you have what we call bone on bone arthritis, mm -hmm. really the last thing you can do to help somebody is a total knee replacement. Mm -hmm. Total knee replacement is a big surgery. I mean, it's not, it's not minor surgery, it's a big surgery. Mm -hmm. The recovery time is about three to four months. Most patients spend one night in the hospital, although we are doing some now as outpatients. And you, you replace the entire knee. You take off the end of the thigh bone, the top of the shin bone, the back of the kneecap, and you replace it mm -hmm. with metal and plastic. And I tell my patients it's the one operation where you can really turn back the clock 30 years. Everything okay. else I do turns back the clock three years. Knee replacement turns back the clock 30 years. Wow. And when you do a successful knee replacement, which 99% of them are, most patients love them and within six months are walking and doing things they haven't done in years. It's a, it's a life-changing procedure for the right patient. Wow. And what about bilateral knees? Same thing, you know, something? So previously we used to do a lot of bilateral knee replacements at the same time, but we learned that, that was a very big surgery, a very big hit for the body, and some studies came out which did suggest that the complication rate for doing bilateral knees was a lot higher than doing just one knee and then another knee six months later. So mm -hmm. most doctors I know have gotten away from doing them both. It was just too much surgery at, at the same time for a patient. And so I do one, one total knee and then I'll do another one six months later. Mm -hmm. But what I find is that when you replace one knee and you give somebody a good knee, mm -hmm. their other knee tends to last longer because the knee that was usually seeing all the weight and all the force is now transferred over to the good knee and that other bad knee can last a year or two before you have to do the other knee replacement. That's excellent. So are you, you utilizing titanium now or stainless? What it, it, the knee replacements are made of cobalt chrome, Yeah, chrome. but there is a titanium knee replacement if patients are allergic to nickel. So yeah. I always check with my patients if you have a nickel allergy. If you're allergic to nickel, you don't want to put a cobalt chrome knee in them. You usually want to use a titanium knee. So oh, different brands and different companies use different components in their metals. Mm, wow. Any, anything about same, I guess the same concept for the total uh, hips as well. I know it's a different type of surgery, but at the end it's just the life-changing experience as well for your total hip. Oh, uh, the total procedure. hips do so well. They, uh, they get out of the gate a little faster than knees do. They don't necessarily require uh, as much post-operative therapy as a knee might, mm -hmm. um, but they really, they do very well very quickly. They, uh, I'm always impressed at what the difference is between a hip and a knee in terms of their post-operative recovery. Um, and I, I would 100% agree with Matt, the, a successful knee or total hip or even total shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, those patients are just, it's a life-changing thing for them. Uh, and it's, it's a satisfying scenario for the doctor and the patient to see somebody do well after a procedure like that. The, the patient selection is a very important uh, scenario when you're talking about knee replacement. It's not the right thing for every patient, mm -hmm. regardless of their arthritic change. Um, but pick the right person at the right time who's been through the conservative gauntlet. They do remarkably well. My mother just recently had a total hip surgery, and I'm, she's a new woman. Yeah. So I said, wow. So thank you all for what you do. We really appreciate uh, your major contribution here in Douglas County. And not only that, just for all the patients that I know, all your patients are not exclusively, uh, exclusively from Douglas County. But however, I and the Board of Commissioners appreciate you taking care of our citizens. 
uh, and all the great things that you do. Before I close, wrap things up, I just wanted to allow you all just you, uh, Dr. Duffy and Dr. Jaffe, to have some closing remarks. And if you want to just tell us a little more about your office and, and, and just so we, our citizens here in Douglas County could just be aware of the services that you're providing. So if we need to make an appointment, we will be calling you. Notice I said we because <laughs> I just mentioned this hip. So therefore, you have any closing remarks for us, Dr. Duffy? I do, and I, I, I definitely want to um, amplify our staff, yes. uh, the people that um, are the, the hip, that make it happen for us, uh, is is immeasurable, and we don't get anywhere without them. Yes. Uh, our office staff, um, Jennifer and Patty, who are here today, uh, they make they make the wheels turn and yes. make our lives manageable. Uh, what we do in the office in the patient room is is for us to manage but outside of that we can't do a whole lot without their professional help and uh, I've always appreciated that I've had a physician's assistant Alan Kippany who's worked with me for 20 years um, who's literally made my life a whole lot easier and more productive um, so it's the people around us that really make us look good yes because we definitely cannot do it on our own absolutely Takes a team. Dr. Uh, I would Jeffy. just echo with what Dr. Duffield talked about there. We have a great office staff. They're happy, they're friendly, the patients love them. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes. You know, Dr. Duffield and I come in, see our patients, and do our thing, and there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes, and we really couldn't do it without all the people that work with us and help us in the office. So uh, we've got a great setup here. We can take care of patients from the beginning to the end, we can do the MRIs, the physical therapy, the bracing, whatever we need to do to help patients get better. And we're happy to see anybody and everybody. Thank you. I just wanted to add last that um, my staff said, why surgeons? I said, my surgeons made me the great woman that I am today. Um, because of the discipline, uh, started again, like I said, started my first surgical procedure with surgeons standing side by side with them. 1977 was the first procedure and with that being said I told him I said you know everything is there's no room for error um, it, the new thing is uh, one is not zero you know with all this new uh, quality improvements plans that are out there and I said my surgeons are just uh, they rem they remind me of, of all business we had to make sure that it was right we only had one time to get it right. And so I said, leading this county, I, I am a great woman because of the surgeons. And you know, of course, my parents and all those other uh, mentors that I look up to, but my surgeons made, gave me the strength. I am not emotional because I know how to se separate emotion from responsibility, and it's because of you all. And I wanted to celebrate you and just say thank you for making me, and when I say your discipline, uh, making me the great leader that I am today because I could not do it. I have to stand with you side by side doing cases and sometimes we don't, as a, as a tech, uh, surgical technologist, we may not pass you what you want. The right time, you know, your hand is out there and you, you know, you say, I didn't want that and you're dropping, you know, because we have to sit on the other side, we're supporting you. And I know that person that helps with your total knees and your total hips, they, you want them to be on point. You want them to anticipate, you want them to think ahead. And I had an opportunity to be a professor or not, should I say that? Yeah, professor at Brown Mecca College of Atlanta, and I taught surgical technologist, and I have about 150, and you may have one of my, they were students, but they're now professionals in your operating room, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I had several that did come to Wellstar Cobb, and they're in the operating room today. But I told them, I said, you must anticipate for the surgeons. You must be one step ahead of them. Think not for them, but to think along the side with them to make sure that they have what they need for our patients. So I appreciate what you all do. And this is, I, I just had to get the surgeons here because I kept saying, why surgeons? I said, I gotta tell you, these uh, men and women uh, make our, uh, they're, they're really, you all are life changing and you've been life changing for me. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Duffield. And thank you, Dr. Gaffey, for being here today. Really appreciate you. And we appreciate everything you're doing here in Douglas County to treat our patients and citizens. I hope you learned something today and we'll see you next time.